the model begins with the hyoid bone, which is located just uh, below the tongue. If I turn the model this way, you'll see the passageway for air. Air will flow down through the larynx and then into the trachea. The larynx is supported by nine cartilages. Three of them are unpaired. The largest is the thyroid cartilage, then the cricoid cartilage, both of which are un unpaired. When I turn the model around, notice that the thyroid cartilage is incomplete, but the cricoid makes a complete ring. The third unpaired cartilage supports the epiglottis. Now the paired cartilages are the arytenoids. Well, you see one here, the other one is covered in muscle. The arytenoids are topped by two very small paired cartilages called the corniculate cartilages. And then the little bumps here represent the cuneiform cartilages. The larynx is anchored by ligaments. There's a thyrohyoid um, ligament, then a cricothyroid ligament, and then a cricotracheal ligament that anchors these structures together. Now, you'll see on the model that there are uh, several muscles they are involved in uh, movements of the larynx or movements of the vocal cords that are found within the larynx. Now, when um, you swallow, it's important that um, the, the um, food or water that you're swallowing be directed into the stomach and uh, that it not enter into the respiratory system. So when swallowing occurs, this entire larynx shifts up and if I turn this around it puts a, a little bit of pressure on the epiglottis. The epiglottis is hinged and the epiglottis folds back. The little cuneiform cartilages act as a stop for it so it doesn't overfold and that protects the airway. Now, the arytenoid cartilages are going to be attached to the true vocal cords and they function in speech production. I'm going to take the model apart now so that we can see the interior. There are two folds visible on the lateral walls of either side. The lower fold is called the true vocal fold or the vocal cords, true vocal cords, and uh, they are controlled by the arytenoids. The arytenoids attach to them and in turn the arytenoids are controlled by intrinsic muscles of the larynx. The arytenoids cause the distance between the true, uh, true vocal folds to um, widen or uh, to narrow, and that produces uh, changes in the sounds of speech. The folds just above are the false vocal folds. They're also called the ventricular folds. They do not function in speech, but they aid in breath retention. Once air is passed through the larynx, then it travels into the trachea. And the trachea has uh, incomplete cartilage rings that support it and keep it open. Okay, the cartilage ends here and here, but of course there is a ligament that holds things together and there's muscle on top of that in life. The trachea branches 
and gives rise to the right and left primary bronchi, which lead into the lungs. Located just uh, inside, right here at the branching, if I were to look inside, there's a, a shelf-like structure called the carina, which uh, has many sensory receptors. If some uh, particle makes its way into the trachea and lands on the carina, it will set off a violent cough reaction, which is a defensive mechanism to help get rid of things here, to cough them up before they have a chance to come into the lungs. Now, the primary bronchi lead into the lungs, and they uh, then branch when they enter the lungs. And on uh, the left lung, there's a, there are two secondary bronchi. Uh, the right lung, though, has uh, three secondary bronchi. So here's one two, and three. The secondary bronchi branch into tertiary bronchi. So this would be a secondary, this would be a secondary, then this would be the level of the third, and then the third branch into quaternary and so on. There are about 25 orders of branching until uh, finally you reach the end uh, of the um, uh, respiratory passageways and you're in the alveolar sacs, which is where actual gas exchange is going to occur. Okay, this model uh, represents a, a, a part of a lobule of a lung. The air uh, has traveled through many levels of branching, and uh, now we're entering into a terminal bronchiole. Terminal bronchioles then branch into respiratory bronchioles. But at the level of the respiratory bronchioles, uh, the walls have become thin enough for a little bit of gas exchange. However, they lead into passageways uh, that uh, deliver the air into the alveolar sacs. So right here would be an alveolar duct which takes air into an alveolar sac. So this would be an alveolar sac. The individual little bubbles are the alveoli. And uh, they're not complete Okay, they're solid out here, but they all open to a common area, which is where the air is. There are extensive capillary beds, of course, on top. Uh, the oxygen now is going to diffuse from the um, alveolar sacs into blood and uh, the carbon dioxide that's in that blood will diffuse out of blood and into the uh, alveolar sacs. The blood then, of course, is going to go back to the heart and uh, then uh, eventually enter the aorta and be distributed throughout the body. Meanwhile, the air now that's in uh, side of these little sacs uh, is uh, now lower in oxygen, higher in carbon dioxide, and it will be breathed out. 